Well, hey there, Mama, and welcome back to the Moms Overcoming Overwhelm podcast, episode 98. I'm Emily McDermott, and I am here beside you on this journey as we work together to declutter your home, head, and heart. Now, I have the wonderful opportunity to talk to some amazing moms on the podcast. Every Thursday, as you probably know, we have an interview, and today's conversation is probably one of my favorites. Today, I'm talking to Kirsten Vossler, and Kirsten is a wife and homeschool mom of nine children, soon to be 10. She loves being a mom and believes that motherhood is holy work and a high calling from God. And she loves encouraging, inspiring, and equipping moms to grow in joy and find fulfillment in their motherhood through her weekly podcast, Rejoicing in Motherhood, which I would definitely recommend. And we are going to be talking today about overcoming a martyr mindset, that victim mentality, to see motherhood as a powerful calling to find magic in what she calls the blessed mundane of motherhood, how we can overcome and look past our unique circumstances and see the big picture of our impact on our kids and future generations, and also what it means to cultivate what she calls an LDL. And you have to listen to the episode to find out what that is. So I hope you are looking forward to this conversation. I hope it is refreshing and encouraging to you. And without further ado, why don't you grab that notebook and pen and let's dive into today's conversation with Kirsten Vossler. Hey there, mama. Are you tired of all the stuff crowding your home calendar and mind? Do you wish you could say goodbye to the endless to-do list running around in your head? Want to declutter but don't know where to start? You're in the right place. Welcome to Mom's Overcoming Overwhelm, where you will find proven and practical solutions to declutter your home, head, and heart. Hi, I'm Emily, a wife, boy mom, and simplicity seeker. I struggled to get pregnant and felt overwhelmed until I discovered decluttering could create the physical and emotional space I needed to become a mom. Now two kids later, I've transformed my life and motherhood by developing simple systems around decluttering, capsule wardrobes, kid stuff, cleaning and tidying, meal planning, time management, and more, and I can't wait to share them with you. If you're ready to reclaim the time and energy you crave, be present with your kids, and finally enjoy the life and motherhood you so deserve, let's kick overwhelm to the curb, shall we? Grab your lukewarm coffee, your notebook and pen, and clear off some counter space. Let's do this. Well, hi, Kirsten. Thank you so much for coming on the Moms Overcoming Overwhelm podcast. I am just really excited to chat with you today. Oh, thank you, Emily. It is a joy and a delight to be here. I'm very excited for this conversation. Yeah, you and I are doing one of these fun things that we do sometimes in the podcasting world, which is called like a swap, which is really you get to like sit with your new BFF for like an hour or something and just talk about the things we love to talk about. So I'm just really excited to have you here because we were just talking before we started recording. I need this reminder constantly. And I just feel like it's a message that needs to be brought to moms on a regular basis. So I am just so happy you're here. And just to jump in, if you want to tell us about you and your family, how you serve moms, and then in your non-existent free time, uh, what you like to do in your non-existent free time. (laughs) (laughs) All right. All right. Well, my name is Kirsten Vossler. I am a wife and a mom of nine kids and one and another one on the way. So almost 10, um, we'll have a new baby in the spring. So that's going to be fun. I live in Idaho and live with my family. We have a, a small homestead kind of situation. So we have, um, the only animals we have is chickens right now. We have a bunch of chickens. So we have eggs usually, <laughs> So we, yeah, we just love it here. It's, it's a very like peaceful place that we live. And I, I love encouraging and serving other moms. So I have a podcast called rejoicing in motherhood. And the purpose of that is really just to encourage and inspire and equip moms to rejoice in the amazing calling of motherhood, because, you know, Emily, all moms love their kids. Like we all love our kids, but we don't always all love motherhood. And so I'm on a mission to, to change that. I'm on a mission to just show, show women that motherhood is a valuable position to hold. It is a valuable calling and it's not a just 
a mother thing. It is actually something that is really powerful and that we are called to. If you're a mom, you are called to it. It doesn't matter what you think your qualifications are or aren't. If you're a mom, you are called to being a mom and you can actually glory and rejoice in that calling. So that's what I love to encourage moms with um, every week on my podcast. And what do I do in my non-existent free time? Let's see. You know, interestingly enough, one of the things that I have recently started doing is going to the gym. And I, that seems weird to say that because I have historically, like all of my life, been an avid gym hater. Like I will not go to the gym. I don't like it. It's horrible. Working out is the worst. And I don't like to sweat and I don't want to do that. And all of those excuses. And the, <laughs> recently about just a few months ago, my husband is really consistent at the gym and he was like, you should come with me. Let's just do this together. And guess what? I'm actually enjoying it. So we go together almost every day, every morning. It's nice that I have a ride and somebody who's committed to going themselves. And so I just jump in with him. <laughs> we go to the gym and it's just like a mile away from our house. It's very close. So it's really easy. And we have older kids now who can watch all the little ones. And so they're all just having breakfast and getting their selves ready for the day. And we run off and go to the gym and come home. And it's been so good for my body physically. And it's been really refreshing. And I never, ever, ever would have thought that I would say that. But other than that, I love, I love learning about homesteading stuff. Um, I'm kind of, I kind of geek out on like healthy food, healthy lifestyle, animals, like learning about all kinds of things like that. And I love listening to podcasts, all types of podcasts. I listen to mom podcasts. I listen to mindset podcasts. I listen to um, sermons sometimes. I love listening just like I'm a big podcast fan. And so doing my own podcast and being able to be on other people's podcasts is super fun because I've just been an avid podcast listener for a very long time. So that's a little bit about me. Mm -hmm. I also, I love to read, especially like historical fiction and stuff, but you know, I don't get a lot of time for that. That is true. <laughs> maybe on, maybe on the treadmill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I really, I love that so much. And just like you said, kind of getting out of the comfort zone, but then I've noticed just even doing like a daily walk, like the benefits for yes. my mental health especially as a mom, and then just being able to connect with God during those times. And I just have really, yeah, enjoyed my morning walks. It is getting a little bit colder here uh, where I am, but just even bundling up and doing like 10 minutes or something is really, uh, really helpful. And I would love it if you could bring us to any point in your motherhood, because you have lots of experience. <laughs> Yeah, where you have maybe felt overwhelmed and you knew that something needed to change, something wasn't working. Maybe it was you're overwhelmed by the stuff, or maybe it was the routines that you had in place weren't working anymore. But just bring us back to a time when you felt overwhelmed and what you did, kind of what was the catalyst for that change. And it could even be like a mindset thing, because I know what we're going to talk about today is very mindset related. So anything you want to talk about, because I know you are a parenting expert, a motherhood expert. <laughs> and we are just here to glean from your wisdom today. Oh, well, thank you. Well, my oldest is 14. And so I don't consider myself like an expert expert on a lot on, on ages older than that, but I do have a lot of experience <laughs> with young children and up into their early teens. So I have to say this question really makes me think because I can think back to many times in my life when I have felt very overwhelmed and for all different reasons. But I think one of the things that stands out to me is that when I feel extremely overwhelmed, I find that a lot of times the reason is sometimes physical and a lot of times it's because I'm putting expectations on myself that are not what they need to be in that time. And so I think it's kind of a, can be a thing where I'm not paying attention to the season that I'm in and not living in the season that I'm in, where I feel, you know, sometimes I might be in a season where I need to slow down and take a breath and not set a lot of goals and expectations for myself because I have a new baby or because we're starting homeschool or, you know, or it's, you know, whatever thing is happening, 
there are times when I need to pull back and my personality wants to be constantly like out there, go, 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 let's do all the things and we can make it work. But I have learned that just making it work isn't always ideal. (laughs) It isn't always the best. And so there are times when I'm just like, feel like my mind is going to explode. My life is a mess. Like nothing is going to work out. Somebody's sick, even, (laughs) you know, there can be just so many things happening at once. And I'm just like, everything's bad. And that to me, when I feel that like everything is bad, that's a good indicator to me that I need to pull back and go, whoa, I think we need to set some realistic expectations, even set for myself some kind of mental boundaries of like, all right, I am not going to do this thing. I'm going to set this thing aside, whether it's I'm not going to have my kids in this play for this season because it's going to be a lot of running around. (laughs) This actually recently just happened to us where there was a really fun opportunity in our town for our kids to be involved in a play. And I was like, yes, like I love theater. I loved, I loved doing that as a kid. That would be so much fun. And my kids were like, yeah, we're kind of into it. And then, and my husband wisely said, I don't know. I don't think that's right for this season. And so I've also learned to listen to him. So if you're married, listen to your husband, listen to him because he often, oftentimes our husbands have wisdom that we don't see because we're in the thick of all the things. And they oftentimes, I know my husband is so good at coming in with like a higher perspective with like a broader view and being able to say, whoa, I don't think that's going to work for us in this season. And because I've done it wrong a lot of times, (laughs) I this time decided to just listen and be like, you know what? You're right. I can see We've got a lot of other things going on. We've got a big garden that we want to harvest and a bunch of food we want to can. And we've got school that needs to start. And we've got all this stuff because we homeschool. And so there's just like a lot of other things going on. Okay, this isn't the right thing for this season. And so we just set it aside. We said, we'll go see it, but we're not going to be involved in it this time. And it actually, um, as we went through our fall, (laughs) this last fall, I realized like, oh man, I'm so glad we didn't have play practice three times a week. Like that would have completely overwhelmed me. And so there are sometimes those physical things where it's like too much on my calendar, just, you know, too much stuff. Like you're so good at talking about like how to eliminate not only just physical clutter, but mental clutter, heart clutter, like all of that. So I think honestly, the times when I've been so overwhelmed, it's either because of physical clutter, mental clutter, or heart clutter. And I, for myself, I find a lot of times the mental clutter really gets in my way. (laughs) Yeah. It's so interesting because I've been kind of on this minimalist path since 2014, 2015. So it's been a while now. And my husband will joke, our husbands are very similar, by the way. But he'll joke (laughs) that like, if it's not bolted down, it's, you know, available for me to get rid of, which is not exactly true, but I've definitely simplified my, my physical space, but where I have struggled the most and what we're going to kind of talk about today is having this martyr mindset, having this victim mentality in my mother, my motherhood. Um, I've been a stay at home mom since 2016. And that after getting, you know, my master's degree in Washington, DC and like working in international relations, and then you're wiping your kid's bum for five years, <laughs> yep. like, what is happening? And just being able to find that, that joy and peace, I think is a big thing for me in the mundane everyday messiness of motherhood. Yes. And so I would love it if you could talk to us about what that mindset shift has looked like for you as far as like, nobody helps me. No one picks up after themselves. I'm always getting crumbs off of the counter. I'm wiping another kid's bomb, like whatever it is. And how do we shift to having that gratitude, that peace, that joy in motherhood that is not coming necessarily from the particular circumstances that we find ourselves in, in the moment. Can you speak a little bit to that? Absolutely. I think that's huge because our circumstances don't always change. Sometimes our circumstances are going to be messy. They're going to be challenging. 
And yet in the midst of that, we can thrive and we can have joy and we can actually enjoy our life, even if things are challenging and feel really hard. I like to call the everyday stuff, the blessed mundane, because it just helps me as I'm, as I'm doing my everyday stuff to recognize this, this wiping these bottoms and changing, you know, helping people change attitudes and picking up messes and all the things that we do throughout the day. These are valuable things. We are impacting lives for eternity. And as we, as we have a, a good attitude about the things that we have to do, even if they seem really simple and tiny and boring, as we have a good attitude about those things, and as we lean into the value of those things, that impacts our children, not only because not only because we're helping them more, not only because we are a, a joyful mom, but also because it's showing them, oh, look at look at this. Like they're, we're setting an example for them. And we're also just, we are raising them. We are training them. Like every mom, every mom is working hard to do the best that they can in raising up these kids. And I just, I think it's really important that we have a, have that big view, have that, that 10,000 foot view of our children and their lives and their futures, because we are not just you know, quote unquote, just stuck here, like serving for a short time. But the things that we're doing are actually going to impact generations. And I think when we actually believe that, then the simple, tiny little things can actually change from just being like, oh, I have to do this again. Or, oh man, this does not feel important. (laughs) It can change to having purpose and having direction and us knowing this is what I'm supposed to be doing, not because this particular action is so great, but because it's actually making an impact in the future. Yeah. And remembering, like you said, sort of the long view. (laughs) And I have to remind myself of that. And when you were talking about how your husband can kind of pull pull you out of the weeds and say, okay, look, like, let's get this bigger view of how this is going to impact our lives. I also struggle with that too. And I'm so grateful for my husband for being able to pull me out and to look at that. But sometimes we have to be pulling ourselves out of it as far as how we're looking at things as mom and just remembering for me, it's remembering like I am training and I am trying to launch my children eventually into this world and being able to not see motherhood as like something on my to-do list. Like, yes. okay, I'm checking off being a mom for the day. Let's move on to the next thing because there's always going to be a next thing to move on to always. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I am a gold star, check the box, give me the approval type of person. Uh, and so, you know, that was always a struggle for me at the beginning of my motherhood because my husband would come yeah. home say, what, you know, what did you do today? And <laughs> he meant it very innocuously. And I would want to be like, well, we went to the library and then we went to the grocery store and then we went to the music class. And I wanted to like list off the things to make me feel like what I was doing was important. And he never asked for that. It was just something that I felt with my type A achiever personality that now that I'm a stay-at-home mom, I need to be able to check off the boxes. And I'm wondering just for you, you know, actually I'm curious if you were kind of that type A personality coming into motherhood and how did you start being able to enjoy the motherhood moments? Like you and I were talking on your podcast at the end about, I'm enjoying how my boys are connecting and seeing that relationship. But if I'm too busy to notice it, I can't find that joy and delight in that moment. So how do we shift our attention and shift our focus, especially if we've been these or still are these type A achiever type of people? Do you have um, any guidance for us on that? Oh, yes, absolutely. I think, I mean, you just, you just nailed it because the deal is 
We do. We set these expectations. And that's even at the beginning when I was talking about like being overwhelmed by expectations, they all came from me, you know, or they come from like what I think I should be doing. And so much of that comes like we can get those kind of influence for, is from everywhere, whether it's, you know, our friends, our parents, social media is huge where we look and we're like, oh, they're doing this and that. And I should be doing that. Oh no. And my kid's going to be ruined because we're not making crafts every day or whatever thing, you know, it is, or we're, we're not, you know, I don't know, <laughs> pick your thing, you know, whatever you see and you're, and you're feeling a little threatened or a little bit nervous, like, oh no, am I doing enough? I think I think the big deal is to just be able to lay those expectations down, to lay those things down and to get in the moment. I I am not necessarily a type A person. I am a firstborn though and I definitely have like a lot of, you know, internal I think you should be doing this better. <laughs> you know, a lot of that going on. Um even though out on the outside I tend to be a little more relaxed, but but yeah, I mean, I have had to learn to just let those things go. It's like, you know what? Those are expectations that either I'm putting on myself or that I feel like I should be doing from other people. And I'm real and I realize, you know what? Those things are not what's important right now. What's important right now is me taking a breath and like enjoying my kids. Look at how they're growing. Look at at how what they're doing. I I like to call it cultivating an LDL. And LDL stands for a low delight level. And this is like one of my favorite things ever. And it's something my husband actually used to kind of laugh at me about before we were even married, because I just, I feel like, I feel like everybody has, you know, giftings and and talents. And I feel like one of my giftings and talents is that I can find something good in just about any situation. I can just enjoy things that might be silly to other people. You know, but it, but it has actually worked out for my benefit because, um, and when I re when I remember to stay in the moment and, and cultivate that low delight level and just let the little things delight me, my life is so much happier and my mothering is so much more fun because, you know, whether it's, you know, just, um, recently I have a one-year-old and he, Sometimes when I change his diaper, I will just pick up his little chubby foot and I will smell his toes and he does not have stinky feet, but I will just go like, oh, I'll pay you and like, you know, and he just laughs so, so, so hard. And it's so cute. And just like taking a minute to just do those fun little things with him and just like enjoy and just remember like what his laugh sounds like when he's a toddler, he's a tiny little toddler and just kind of putting those moments away. And those things I think when, when we take those little moments and we actually appreciate them, like you said, like cultivating that gratitude, it really builds up and it gives us a great bank account of joy and of gratitude to be able to pull from when we do have challenging, hard things going on, because we recognize like, you know what, like that was fun. (laughs) You know, even if there's so much other, even if there are so many other things happening and going on right then this moment. I was able to enjoy. I was able to pull this little glimmer, this little piece of glitter right out of that moment and let it sparkle. And I think that is that is worthwhile. That is valuable. And it's a great thing to teach our kids as well because they also have, you know, their own little like childish disappointments and frustrations and, you know, they're working hard to learn stuff and all those things. And if we can teach them also just, Hey, wait a second, look at the sunset. Isn't that beautiful? Let's just take a minute. And I think in our, in our culture, in our society, in the West here, we are so focused on achievement on, you know, practical, measurable things. And yet there's so much to life that is not practical and is not measurable. And I think we kind of need, as moms, we need to kind of lean into that a little bit and recognize that just because something isn't measurable doesn't mean it's not valuable. Yeah, I really love that so much. And the lowering your delight level, I absolutely love that concept. I kind of joke with my husband about lowering the bar, (laughs) which Uh is a slightly different thing, but it has to do with expectations like you were talking about. I'm like, how do you feel about having oatmeal for dinner? <laughs> it's like, that sounds great. I'm like, well, that's great because that's what we're having, you know? Yeah. And just being like, what expectations am I holding myself up against? 
because mm-hmm. it's always coming from me or my thoughts about, like you said, like what the best mom should be. And meanwhile, my kids and my husband, they don't care. They just yeah. want my presence and just being able to find the delight in small things is just really um, so powerful. And I was just thinking about how like glimmering or that's like, there's this new kind of concept of positive glimmer, um, like sparks of joy or peace that we're recognizing. Mm -hmm. And so kind of finding those glimmer moments or glitter moments or whatever sparkly thing. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. The opposite. Oh yeah. The opposite of triggers. So the opposite of a trigger being a glimmer. Yeah. I just found out about this recently, but I love that kind of, but I love that. Yeah. Kind of finding the, the glimmers in the world and and especially in those mundane um, moments of motherhood. And I want to make sure that um, everyone can connect with you and find out how they can best connect with you. And then if you're okay with it, this just kind of came to me, but I wanted to read a poem I wrote about um, called just a mom, because I think it's really applicable for this conversation. And maybe we can just end with that because I think hopefully you'd be blessed by it too. But um, if you can share where people can find you and connect with you, and I know you have a free gift for us about how to increase our joy levels. So if you can tell us all about that, that would be great. Yes, I do. In fact, I just wanted to say one more thing. It just reminded me about the perfectionism part. And I was talking to a counselor years ago and I remember I told her something like, well, such and such wasn't perfect, but something, something. And she stopped me and she said, wait, can we just go back to what you just said? She said, do you realize that there is no such thing as perfect? So there is no such, and that just like was so freeing to me. There is no such thing as a perfect day. There is no such thing as a perfect mom. There is no such, like perfect literally doesn't exist because everybody is unique. Everybody is individual. Everybody has gifts. Everybody has challenges. And so perfect doesn't actually exist. And so if we can just lay aside this expectation of perfection and just recognize like that's not even real it's all a myth. Perfection is a myth. Let's just lay that down and let's go with the giftings and the callings that we have and let's make the most of it and let's enjoy it. So amen. Love that. Yes. (laughs) Yes. So yes, you can find me on my, my podcast is called rejoicing in motherhood. And you can listen to that everywhere that you like to listen to podcasts. I also have a website, kirstenvossler.com. And there you can find some articles, you can find show notes for my podcast, and also you can find your free gift, which is called Five Ways to Increase Your Joy Level Today. They're all free things that you can do immediately that will just boost your boost your joy, boost, boost your, your love of motherhood, and just, yeah, just bring you joy and and grace and happiness. <laughs> Wonderful. And I will link to all of those things. And I did read this poem on one of my episodes, but I just feel like it's really apropos for the moment. So I'm going to finish with this and yes, then we'll say goodbye. Is that okay? That sounds wonderful. Okay, it's called just a mom. I'm just a mom. I say, I'm just a mom who spends her days making snacks, cleaning crumbs, wiping faces, noses, bums, and tear stained cheeks still wet. It never ends. And yet I'm just a mom, you see. Shouldn't that be enough for me? Some days it just doesn't seem that I am worthy of a dream besides the one that's been fulfilled to be a mom and still. Lights turned out, foreheads kissed, quiet settles like a mist, a longing rises from the deep as I lay me down to sleep, quietly knocking on my door, it whispers, you are more. I wake up with eyes still bleary, body tired, spirit weary. The day starts and I strain to hear the whispering voice that was so clear, telling me I'll be me again, that may be true, but when? It's funny how the days will pass, the hours drag on, the weeks fly past. I try to, but I can't recall the details of when they were small. Someday they'll let go of my hand, but now I understand that my life may seem ordinary with heavy burdens to be carried, but in times of joy, as well as pain, there's a sacred sacredness in the mundane. It's a truth I deeply know when I slow down and let go of the weight of others' expectations, shoulds and guilt and obligation, feeling less than always comparing my life to what everyone else is sharing. Above all, I know I must let go of the word just. 
I am a mom and friend and wife. I choose to show up in my life. I use the gifts from my creator because I was meant for something greater. I'm clear on my direction and embrace my imperfections. I am a mom, I say. I am a mom who spends her days grateful for what I know I'll miss. One more story, one more kiss. The love and grace that I receive is the legacy that I leave. Wow. That is beautiful. It's like you wrote it for this conversation. I know, right? <laughs> yes. Well, thank you, Kirsten, so much for being on the show. And I know my mom is going to connect with you. And I've just been so blessed by this conversation. So thank you so much. Thank you, Emily. If you liked today's podcast, here's what you can do. Just take 30 seconds to leave me a review. I know you're a busy mama. You're overwhelmed, in fact. But 30 seconds of your day makes such an impact. I'll be blessed by your words. They'll definitely make my day. And who knows, you might be entered for this month's giveaway. An Apple podcast, scroll down to write a review. Thanks so much for your time. I'm so grateful for you.